Hey everyone, I'm Adam Jaczorski. Welcome to the Math at Work video series, where today I'm joined by our very special guest, Ashley from Sunwing Airlines. Thank you so much for joining us today, Ashley. Thanks, thanks for having me. Our pleasure. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Um, so I'm a first officer here at Sunwing Airlines. Um, I've been here for about seven or eight years. Um, so my journey started off when I was about four years old. Um, my grandfather was a pilot and got me very interested in flying at a young age. Um, so there it kind of took off. Um, I just kept telling my parents I wanted to be a pilot, I want to be a pilot, and it just stuck with it. Um, I started my flight training when I was in high school, around 15, 16 years old, at a local flying school. Got my private license um, when I was 17, uh, just before college. I went to an aviation college where I got my commercial license and a seaplane rating. From there, I came back home and uh, went back to my local flying school where I got my instructor license and actually started teaching there. I stayed there for about five years um, and during that time also obtained some more ratings. I got a multi-engine rating and an instrument rating, uh, which what allows me to fly you know, in a more commercial type atmosphere. So after that, I uh, took my first job up uh, Northern Ontario flying for an outfitter that did some things around the shore of Hudson Bay and fly to some First Nations reserves, uh, things like that. I did that for about a year. Um, then I came back down to the Toronto area, worked for a third tier connector airline, um, which I moved up to a training captain uh, position in after um, a few years there. So I spent about three years in that position and then I made it over to Sunwing. So that's where I am now. So here at Sunwing, uh, as I mentioned, I'm a first officer and I also teach um, ground school and IPT, which is instrument procedure trainer. It's the first step in simulator training uh, for new hires. So that's where we are today. Very cool. Um, obviously a very interesting and exciting career, uh, but I don't, I don't imagine you get to this point without a lot of support and hard work. Can you give us an idea of some of the, like, the key elements that have played a role in getting to this point in your career? Yeah, um, because I started so young, it was very important that I had the support of my family, first of all. Um, I was in high school when I started my process, so I had a lot of support from my teachers, from my peers, other students. Um, because handling school exams and school homework on top of aviation things as well can be quite the handful. So I was in school and high school during the week and I flew on the weekends, so there was a balance. So I had a lot of support that way. My instructors were great um, and I had a lot of support through them. Also other role models that I had in my life. Um, my grandfather unfortunately had passed away by that point, but I had had other pilots that I knew um, that I was able to network with and help kind of support me or mentor me uh, through that process as well. Um, I went away to college and same thing, we had mentorship type programs and I even became one myself in my second year of college to help out people in their first year. Um, so lots of studying, just lots of discipline and perseverance and sticking with it. Um, it's something that takes a lot of uh, time and effort. But worth it in the end, right? Definitely worth it. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't trade this job for the world. So yeah. <laughs> it's definitely, definitely been worth the the hard work and the dedication and, you know, the the late nights and the early mornings. And yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. definitely worth it. Yeah. Well, good, good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I believe we're going to switch locations now. We're sure. going to head to the hangar. Yes. All right. <laughs> Let's go to the hangar. All right. <laughs> Here we are in the Sunwing Airlines hangar at the Toronto Pearson International Airport. We are standing in front of a 737NG, a Boeing 737NG, and this is very cool. <laughs> Thanks so much for getting us in here, Welcome. Ashley. Uh, I imagine you see a lot of cool stuff in your job. Yes, uh, yes I, I do, definitely. Yeah, and I'm curious, what would you say, in your opinion, is the best part about being an airline pilot? Um, well, I can't just say one. So I would say it's that basically the, the environment's always changing. The scenery is always changing if you want to put it that way. So uh, no flight's ever the same. Um, we have different aircraft, we have different crew, different passengers, different weather all the time. So it's like having the corner office all the time with a view. So always a new challenge every time you come to work and uh, it's just the ever-changing environment just keeps you on your toes and uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't really get boring. It's, it's quite enjoyable. I bet. That's so cool. Now I understand 
we have the privilege of actually going into one of these aircraft and yes. actually visiting the flight deck. Yes. Yeah. And here we are on the flight deck of the Boeing 737NG, and this is unreal. Now, as you know, the, uh, the Math at Work video series is about looking at how mathematics plays a role in different professions. Ashley, can you give us an idea of how mathematics will play a role in the career of an airline pilot? Yes. So, I'll be honest, at the point of my career now, uh, a lot of things are automated, as you can see. We have a lot of applications on iPads that we use. Um, for our calculations, our planning. Um, obviously, as well, the plane does a lot of work for us. Leading up to this point, though, that wasn't always the case. A lot of smaller airplanes are my path getting here um, has been a lot more manual, a lot more hands-on. Uh, but some of the things that I can think of that would really come into mind with respect to math in our everyday uh, operation uh, would be number one is uh, fuel. Okay, so fuel is a big thing for us, obviously. So uh, when we're, we're uplifting fuel, for example, when we're getting fuel at an airport, um, we know how much fuel that we need to get to take our next trip. So our fuel on board is measured in kilograms, but often the fuel that we'll bring on board from a truck uh, that will get pumped on is either in liters or in gallons, depending on where you are. So because of that, we have to do the math on basically how much we intend to uplift and uh, then we do a conversion so that we know we got the right amount. We also have to check that it's within a certain percentage of what we hoped to uplift from what we actually got uh, to make sure that there's no error in any readings, any meters, the truck, the aircraft, anything like that. So we want to make sure everything balances out. Uh, one of the other things I can think of is on uh, when we're descending. So when we're descending, again, the airplane does a lot of the work on its own with respect to its path calculations. But one thing that we do is we kind of mentally think about uh, roughly three nautical miles will pass for every thousand feet uh, that we want to descend. So if we think about it that way, if you wanted to descend 10,000 feet, for example, it should be something you would think about doing approximately 30 miles back from wherever you're planning to descend to. So simple math like that will help you judge when you should start uh, descending. Um, another thing that we do uh, with math is our crosswinds. So uh, when we're landing, we have a certain speed that we, have to, that we have to follow and hold on our approaches. So because of that, uh, there has to be some corrections with respect to winds is the easiest way we can put that. Um, what we do here is we add uh, half of our headwind component or wind that's directly on the nose of the airplane and then also we add our gust factor on top of that too if there's any wind gusting up from the steady wind so we have to do these calculations usually it can be quite simple when you have a direct headwind it's just 50 percent of that number but when it's coming from a 45 degree angle to you you have to start interpolating so it can be something closer to 35 percent of the amount and if it's straight from your side, we don't factor it in at all. So then you have to think about that and where the wind's coming from and how much you're gonna have to add or subtract to keep a safe speed on approach in case wind comes or goes because it never stays steady on the approach. Yeah. Those are some of the major ones I can think of, but we definitely have a lot more um, with respect to our weight and balances, our uh, just fuel planning, dispatch planning in general. Um, but that's, uh, that's getting into a lot more. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much. We'll finish up with, uh, with one question. For any students out there that are interested in pursuing a career as an airline pilot, what advice would you offer them? Um, basically to stick with it. A lot of people, um, again, it's a kind of an unconventional career. It's not one that you would think most people would lean towards, um, especially for the ladies. Um, so there's going to be a lot of people that might uh, kind of think it might be far-fetched or it might be, you know, something that might be out of reach, but it is definitely not. So just do the research. Um, ask your peers if you know anyone that's in aviation or any teachers that might know anything about it. They can help you get off on the right path. Um, it's so attainable, it's so doable, although it looks like it's something that you might have to reach far for. But um, there's lots of us out there, so just stick with it. Stick with your studies, stay focused, stay disciplined, and you can make it here if this is where you want to be. And hopefully one day I can see you here beside me as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much. That's great advice.
Thanks very much, Ashley, for having us, for giving us your time today. No uh, many thanks to Sunwing Airlines for allowing us to uh, visit these cool locations here. And thanks for sharing how math plays a role in your job. No problem. Thanks. All right. We'll see you next time where we'll look at more math at work.